Hello and welcome to Tuesday evening's Yoga with Phil. As always, your practice is at your own risk, so pay attention to how you feel. Only do the things that feel right for your body, being prepared to take the lighter options where that's right, and missing things out if there's anything your body doesn't need today. We're going to start the class lying down. When you're ready, if you want to take yourself to lying down on your mat, that might mean stretching your legs out, coming into Shavasana pose, corpse pose, hands away from the body, palms turned up. But it might also, if there's any discomfort in your lower back, which you might have, especially at the start of the class, you can take a bend of your knees. Once you've found a comfortable lying down posture, give yourself a few moments of not really trying to do anything except relax and make that transition from your day so far, however that's been, to the next hour of yoga. We're going to start the class today with dynamic setu bandha bridge pose. So we're going to roll up and down from bridge pose with our breath, so aligning each move to the breath, and with a count to allow us to extend the lift and the, the lower. To prepare for bridge, I can see a knee bending already. Bend your knees so that your feet come in, hip distance apart. Have your hands stretched down by your side. So we're gonna be lifting to a count of six. We'll hold gently at the top for a count of three and lower for a count of six. Those are quite long counts. So you might want to maybe do a, a lifting and lowering for four or five and holding for one or two at the top and the bottom. But I'm gonna count you through to a count of six for the first couple of rounds and then you can take it, take it off, take it yourself. So take a breath in and an exhale and then start to lift your hips away from the ground inhaling two three four five six hold two three ex inhale lower two three four five six hold two three inhale lift two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, lower, two, three, four, five, six. And then keep that going with your own breath, lifting on an inhale and lowering on an exhale. When you take that hold at the top or the bottom, make it a loose hold, so don't pull everything in tight, just, just don't breathe at that point so that you're not tensing, you're staying relaxed. And as you warm up, you might find you can take your bridge pose a little higher. So take two more full rounds. When your hips have landed on the ground after your last round, stretch your legs out, turn your palms up, let your feet relax apart, taking two or three breaths there. Keep your awareness within your body, maybe noticing any tingling or sensations from taking bridge pose. Bringing your feet together, taking your arms up overhead, interlacing your hands, pointing your palms away if your shoulders are okay with, you, with that. 
Stretch your toes forward, stretch your arms back, stretching out as long as you possibly can. Feeling the stretch all along the top of your body, from the top of your toes all the way through to your fingers at the other end. Release that stretch, bring your hands over by your side, coming to sit up, and from sitting, come to standing. Ready for three rounds of Shivananda Sun Salutations. Standing at the top of your mat, bringing your feet together. Relaxing your arms by your side. With your feet together, pressing them down into the ground. Maybe pressing the inner um, side of your foot, the big toe side down a little more firmly. Lifting the crown of your head, taking your shoulders up and back, tilting the top of your chest up towards the ceiling, just a touch. We'll begin with two breaths. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Palms come together at the centre of your chest. With your palms pressing together, lift your elbows to the ceiling a little and then take them back towards you. Reach your arms up towards the ceiling, look between your hands. Stretching higher as you tilt your rib cage up towards the ceiling, keeping your abdomen pressing forward as your heart lifts up to the ceiling. From your hips, stretch forward. Keep your arms lifted so you're stretching forward all the way down for as long as you can. When you can keep them stretched forward no longer, bend your knees as much as you need. Bring your fingertips down to the mat. Relax your neck muscles so your whole upper body relaxes over your legs. Take your right leg all the way back. Lower your knee to the ground. Place the top of your foot flat on the ground. Lift your gaze. Pressing your foot down into the mat, that will help your hips to ease forward. Tucking your right toes under, sending your left foot back, coming into a plank. So make your plank active, hands push the ground away, your knees lift, your heels press away behind you, bringing on a little bit of core strength. So navel gently towards your spine, shoulders easing down your back. If you're pushing hard into the ground, you might find you're lifting up out of your um, shoulder sockets. You could just maybe let your, upper, let your um, upper body relax a little down onto your arms so that you're more firmly connected shoulder, at your shoulder socket. Lowering your knees and then bringing your chest down to the ground. Make contact with your chin or forehead onto the mat. Pressing forward as you lift your face and lift your chest. Shoulders ease back, elbows in close, and tucking your toes, lifting your hips and coming to down face dog. Hands press forward, hips lift as high as you can take them, heels press firmly down. Looking between your hands, bring your right foot through, let your left knee lower. Your gaze lifts, pressing into your left foot to help your hips Knees forward and down, bringing your left foot through, back to a forward fold with everything relaxing down to the ground, knees bent as much as you need, fingertips touch the mat, and reach your arms forward, lifting them up to the ceiling. They'll take your body upwards, looking between your hands, tilting your ribcage up to the ceiling, and hands come down. Inhale. Exhale, palms press together. Stretching and reaching your arms up and back. Taking your armpits back with your arms from your hips, stretching forward and all the way down. Arms straight for as long as you can take them, then relaxing as your fingertips touch the mat. Left leg all the way back, lowering your knee, top of your foot on the ground, lifting your gaze. Tucking your left toes under, setting your right foot back, coming into plank. Again, making it strong. I'm not going to go through all those points again, because only if you can cope with as long a plank as last time. 
pressing your hands away from the ground. If you're feeling strong, you could come down in one straight line by taking your elbows back down towards your feet. Otherwise, lower your knees, then your chest. Make contact with your chin, or if you can reach it, your forehead. And pressing forward as you lift your face and lift your chest to cobra. Elbows in close, shoulder blades easing down your back. Tucking your toes under and lifting your hips to down face dog. Heels press down, hands push down, and also push away from you. That will take your chest towards your knees. Looking between your hands, bringing your left foot through, taking your right knee down. Gaze lifts, hips relax. Right foot springs through, coming to forward fold, head hangs heavy, reaching with your arms, lifting your whole body up towards the ceiling, looking between your hands, and hands come down. Inhale, exhale. We're going to take two more rounds. We'll take those rounds straight through, no pause, starting with the rest breath. Inhale, exhale, palms press firmly together. Inhale, reach and stretch up, looking between your hands. Exhale, reach and stretch forward and down, fingertips touch the mat. Inhale, right leg back, knee down, lift your gaze. Hold your breath, send your left foot back, finding plank, looking between your hands. Exhale, slowly lower, one straight line or knees, then chest. Inhaling, face and chest lift, shoulder blades ease back. Exhale, toes tuck. Hips lift on high as your heels press firmly down. Inhale, right foot through, left knee down, lift your gaze. Exhale, left foot through, forward fold. Really using the exhale to relax down. Inhale, reaching and stretching up and back. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, exhale, palms press firmly together, elbows lifting. Inhale, reaching and stretching up and back. Exhale, forward and down. Fingertips coming into line with your toes. Inhale, left leg back, knee down, hips relax. Hold your breath, right foot back. Coming to plank, heels pushing away behind you. Exhale to lower. Inhale, facing chest lifts, shoulder blades and elbows ease back. Exhale, toes tuck, hips lift, hands push forward, guiding your chest to your knees. Inhale, left foot through, right knee down, lift your gaze. Exhale, right foot through, forward fold. Inhaling, reaching up, leading with your arms, showing your armpits to the ceiling. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, Exhale, palms together. Final round. Inhale, reaching and stretching up. Exhaling forward and down. Inhale, right leg back. Knee down, lift your gaze. Hold your breath. Left foot back, coming into plank. Shoulder blades ease down your back. Exhale to lower. Inhale, face and chest lifts. Chest easing forward, elbows easing back. Exhale, toes tuck, hips lift, hands push forward against the ground. Inhale, right foot through, left knee down. Exhale, left foot through, forward fold. Inhale, reach and stretch up. Exhale, hands down. Final side, inhale. Exhale, palms press firmly together. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, forward and down. Inhale, left leg back, knee down, lift your gaze. Hold your breath, right foot back, our final plank. Exhale to lower. Inhale, face and chest forward and lifts. Exhale, toes tuck, hips lifting as high as you can take them to the ceiling. Inhale, left foot through, right knee comes down. 
exhale right foot through final forward fold inhaling reaching and stretching up to the ceiling exhale hands down taking your hands apart feet face forward couple of breaths inhale exhale inhale exhale wonderful bring yourself to lying down on your back stretching out into a comfortable lying down posture which may coincidentally be shavasana palms turned up towards the ceiling letting everything rest being aware of any sensations in the body you may feel a tingling you may feel some part of your body telling you some story about what you've just made it do whatever your experience just observe it as it is as you take a moment's rest we're going to take a hip opener but with thread the needle eye of the needle in fact eye of the needle so to prepare bend your knees bringing your feet in towards you with your feet hip distance apart pick up your left foot cross your left ankle on your right knee pick up your right foot so you're bringing your knee in towards you you can then lift your head or reach your hand with the left hand going through the eye of the needle to interlace your hands behind your thigh and then if you're if you're able to take your head back down onto the mat bringing your legs with you so that your head's resting on the ground before we do anything else take a flex of your feet so flex both feet so your toes are heading towards your ankle and particularly with the left foot that's crossed over just make sure that the little toe side of your foot is also coming up to the knee so you might want to draw the little toe side a bit more firmly up towards the knee and then to bring on the hip stretch start to draw your right thigh in towards you so that you're easing your right knee towards your right shoulder and to really then bring on the stretch start to press your left knee away from you and then starting to use your breath so that as you inhale you draw your right leg in and as you exhale you let press your left knee away a little more and that will give you a bit more strength with each breath into the posture if this is feeling easy and you're not getting much of a stretch what you could do is you could maybe take a hold of your shin instead of your thigh but only do that if you can still rest your upper body reasonably comfortably on the ground taking one more breath pressing your tailbone into the ground as you take it and then release let your leg go land your right foot down uncross your left leg and bring your right ankle onto your left knee picking up your left foot reaching through taking a hold of your thigh flexing your feet paying attention to the little toe side of your right foot relaxing yourself back on the ground as much as you're able to whilst you still got a hold of your thigh starting to draw your left knee towards your left shoulder pressing your right knee away from you enjoying that stretch that's coming right in your right hip maybe noticing is this hip the same as the other or is it a little bit more is it a little tighter is it a little looser using your breath as you inhale drawing your left knee closer to your left shoulder as you exhale pressing your right knee away taking a hold of your shin if that's feeling easy 
pressing your tailbone down to the ground relaxing your shoulders it's very easy to build a whole lot of tension in the shoulders as we take this posture and then taking one more breath a final drawing of the left knee and a press away of the right knee release your left leg bring your left foot down to the ground uncross your legs stretching your legs out palms by your side palms turned up and let your whole body relax against the ground from here we're going to take yogic sit-ups to work the core bringing your hands by your side with your palms turned down feet come together drawing your navel down towards your spine as you next exhale lift your upper back away from the ground lifting your arms away from the ground as you do that then sending your chest and your fingertips towards your toes keeping your navel drawing towards your spine inhaling lower that back down take a moment and then take more of these with your breath so as you next exhale lifting up you can also turn your palms up towards the ceiling and then as you inhale you're taking it back down turning your palms back to the ground keeping that going with your own breath for about five or six more you're keeping the movements controlled and in line with the breath keeping your lower back planted into the ground and as you draw your navel to your spine that will help your lower back stay connected to the ground so i think that's two more of those And then let your feet relax apart turn your palms to face up taking a few good abdominal breaths lifting your navel on an inhale relaxing it down on an exhale we're going to then work down the sides of the core bend your knees bring your feet in towards you and then bring your knees up onto your chest take your hands behind your head with your um, fingers interlaced your palms pressing against the back of your head draw your navel to your spine where it needs to be for the rest of while we're doing this as you next exhale lift your chest towards your knees turning so that you then take your left elbow to your right knee and then as you next inhale untwist and lower keeping your navel to your spine exhaling lifting taking the other elbow to the other knee as you inhale untwist and lower and then keep that going with your own breath knowing that if you want to strengthen it you could then send the leg away so the same side as your el as the elbow that's touching the knee you could send that leg away and that will strengthen the sit up keeping your navel it drawing towards your spine see if you can separate the twist and the lift so that you twist and lift sorry and then you make the twist untwist and then you lower taking up to two more of these on each side and i do mean up to this is a strong stretch and when you're done stretch your legs out hands by your side palms turned up taking good deep breaths down into your abdomen
From here, we're going to take our shoulder stands. So if you're going to come into shoulder stands, start to prepare by bringing your legs together, hands by your side, palms turned down. If you don't want to take a shoulder stand, if that's not right for you today, which would include if you have high blood pressure, it's not recommended to come into a shoulder stand, then you could lift your hips and have your legs in the air, maybe taking a block or a cushion under your hips. If you're taking shoulder stand, hands by your side, bring your elbows in as close as you can. And then when you're ready, lifting your legs, either with your legs bent so you can get some momentum or with your legs straight. As soon as you've got a hip lift, bring your hands firmly onto your lower back. So your palms are pressing against your lower back, your fingers are good and wide, supporting you. Holding there, I'm going to be looking towards the camera, but you keep your gaze up towards your knees. Once you've got a bit of a measure of how your shoulder stands hanging today, then you might want to make some adjustments to it. So things that you can think about are pressing your upper arms and shoulders firmly down into the ground to give you strength in the posture. Thinking about, would you prefer to have your legs a little bit higher? So moving your knees away from you and bringing your, uh, lowering your back down so that it's more your buttocks in your hands, or maybe lowering your knees a bit more towards your face and feeding your back up through your hands. Thinking about how much weight you want to send down your hands to your elbows, how much weight goes directly down to your shoulders. So your aim is for an effortless shoulder stand that feels like you could hold it for a while. You can stay here or you can come out at any time. If you want to though, you could come with me to the pose of tranquility. So to prepare for the pose of tranquility, just take your hips back a little bit towards the wall that's above your head, taking one hand, then the other down onto the mat. If you feel like you've got some good control of where your hips are, you could then take one hand around and place it on a shin. If that works out for you and feels stable, you could bring the other hand around, placing it on the other shin. If that doesn't feel stable, take the first hand back and then bring the other hand round. Once you're in the pose of tranquility, you're aiming as much as you can to have the, as much of your upper back on the ground so that you're not taking all your weight onto your neck. Your legs resting onto your straight arms. In a moment, we're gonna take Paschimottanasana, the straight leg forward fold. And this is effectively a straight leg forward fold, but done upside down as you'll see in just a moment. So if you are in the pose of tranquility, return your hands onto your lower back, one hand then the other. Just reset your shoulder stand, find the balance again. And then preparing to come down, take one hand onto the mat, palm face down, followed by the other hand, and then use your hands as your brakes, draping your spine back down onto the mat. Once your hips have landed, stretch your legs down to the ground, turning your palms to face up, taking a few breaths there, allowing your body to adjust back to your head, your heart, your legs being in one straight line. So our counter pose today is going to be Matsyasana. So after a shoulder stand, which closes the body over itself, we always take a posture that opens the body up. So today it's Matsyasana. Preparing for fish pose, bend your knees, bring your feet in towards you. Press into your feet to lift your hips and bring your hands underneath your hips so that your hands are pressed stretching down to your feet, palms turned down, bringing your thumbs together if, if that works for you. With your hands in place, you can then sit back down. So you'll be finding you're sitting probably somewhere around your wrists, stretching your legs out, bringing your feet together, flexing your feet. 
The starting point for Matsyasana is to press your upper arms down into the ground. And as you press them down into the ground, you can maybe see if you can draw them toward your shoulders towards each other, helping your upper back to start moving away from the ground, allowing your chest to start doming up towards the ceiling. Then take your attention to your elbows and your lower arms, starting to press your elbows into the mat. And once you've got that downward pressure with the elbows, you could then start to bend your elbows, keeping your chest, neck and head in line so that as your chest lifts, your head lifts with it. Once you've lifted as high as you can, take your, let your head rest back and then lower yourself slowly so that the top of your head or maybe the back of your head comes into contact with the mat. Keeping your elbows pressing down so that the weight stays in your elbows, not all in your head. Lifting your shoulder blades away from the ground, still rolling your shoulders outwards and inwards. Taking two more breaths there. To come out, put some pressure into your elbows to lift your head a little away from the ground. Tilt your chin down towards your chest and lower your back down onto the ground. Press into your heels to lift your hands and take a rotate of your wrists. I couldn't see everybody's Matsyasana there, but those the ones I saw were looking fantastic. Good lifts of the chest. From there, bringing yourself up to sitting. And we'll take a neck stretch just to ease everything out after shoulder standing and matsyasana in. Turning your head first of all to the right, keep your chin level, not looking up, not looking down. Back to the centre, over to the left. To the centre, all the way right. To the centre, and all the way over to the left. Coming back to the centre. Setting yourself up then for Paschimottanasana, the straight leg forward fold. Come to sitting with your legs stretched out. Do um, take a block or a cushion to sit on. If for you sitting up like this with your legs straight requires effort. If it takes a lot of effort to hold yourself there, or if you just want to have something to sit on, do take something to sit on. And then to give us really good contact against the ground, I always think this is a little bit undignified, but what you might just want to do is just take your hand down and have a little scoop of things back on either side, just to get the top of your thighs as closely connected to the ground as you can. Then, with your legs stretched out, now if you know when you come into um, this forward fold that it's, ch it's challenging for you straight away to get your body forward, then take a small bend of your knees now. Lifting your arms and stretching your arms to the ceiling, reaching up as tall as you can. As you next exhale, hinging forward from your hips, taking everything towards your toes, especially your abdomen, keeping your arms lifted for as long as you can, reaching your arms forward, letting them bring you forward. But when you can hold them no longer and still lower, let them drift down to wherever they come to for you. So that might be knees, shins, ankles. And then start to use your breath so that as you inhale, you ease your body forward towards your toes. And as you exhale, you relax your upper body down over your legs. If you've got your knees bent, once you've established a forward fold, you can then maybe start to straighten them. But only if that it still feels okay on your lower back. And if that doesn't require you to sit back up a little bit more. Inhaling, easing forward, 
exhaling and that's the important bit relaxing your body as much as possible allowing your muscles to relax enabling them to stretch longer take two more breaths there so this should feel like a wonderful relaxing posture no forcing the hamstrings easing and relaxing in then looking up towards your toes stretching your hands forward on an exhale reach forward and then a big inhale as you lift upright stretching your hands to the ceiling and exhaling lowering your hands bring your hands behind you with your fingertips pointing away although if that doesn't feel like your wrists were like that you could bring your hands to face the other way or you could come onto your elbows yes if you're on a cushion you might want to remove your cushion press your hands firmly into the ground lifting your chest and when you next inhale lift your hips away from the ground taking your feet the soles of your feet down towards the ground if this is stronger than you need you could um, take this with come down and then take it with bent knees so you're coming into tabletop keeping your breath going seeing if your hips can lift seeing if your toes can head down towards the ground anymore and on your next exhale slowly lowering back down hips land sitting back up taking a rotate of your wrists so a nice wrist strengthener a bit of bone loading to help the bones and wrists strengthen only if they're up for it coming then to work our back we're going to take a lunge to work our back today so we're going to take crescent move and we're going to also get a hip opener out of it as well which will be our second hip opener of the day so a really good chance to stretch the hips come to um, kneeling at the back of your mat so i'll just adjust my camera so that i get my head back and if you are on a hard floor we're going to be on um, the left knee at first for a while so you could consider a cushion or if you have such a thing a knee pad under the left knee hands relaxed by your side checking your knees a hip distance apart lifting your chest relaxing your shoulders and bringing your right foot forward once your right foot's forward bring yourself down over that leg hands either side of the right foot Have a look down at your knee and your ankle make sure that your ankle is in front of your knee so you've got a bit of a slope away from you on your shin let your hips relax down towards the ground maybe pressing down into your left foot to help your hips ease forward and down bringing your right hand onto your right knee keep your hips low as you press into that hand to bring your torso upright Bringing your other hand then onto that knee if this is feeling wobbly you can take your right foot a little more out to the right to give you a stable base when you next exhale see if you can bend that knee a little more sinking lower from here we're going to lift our arms in a moment if you wanted to make this more challenging you could tuck your left toes under and lift your left knee or you can keep that knee on the ground wherever your knee is as you next inhale lift your arms up towards the ceiling stretching your hands up towards the ceiling holding here if this is as far as is as you need right now or you could look up between your hands and then take your arms back tilting your ribcage up towards the ceiling strengthening the stretch in your left hip flexor arching your back coming into crescent moon take one more breath here reaching up and back a little more if you can if you're looking up look forward 
And then as you next exhale, lower your left knee if it's lifted, bring your hands down either side of your front foot and take a breather there. As you take that breather, you might just want to straighten your right knee a little, not making it fully straight, but just a chance to come back and relax before then coming back forward so that your hips are relaxing. Bringing your right hand then inside your right leg. Turning your right foot out about 90 degrees. Hips relax. And then starting to walk your hands forward. As you do that, letting your chest come evenly down towards the ground. So neither the right side nor the left side are any closer to the ground. It's coming evenly down. Feeling the stretch develop inside your right hip. You might find you can come onto your elbows, but you equally might not. And this isn't about getting the elbows to the ground. It's about getting a really good stretch right in that right hip. So take two more breaths here. Each exhale, relax your hips, relax your right leg, relax your shoulders, relax your neck. Then slowly start to walk your hands back in, coming back up, turning your right foot to face forward, bring your right hand onto your right knee, press in, lifting yourself back up, straightening your right leg, and bringing your right foot back. Preparing to do the other side. In fact, as you know, I would suggest you stand up because I stood up to change my camera and that was actually, that was very nice. So you might just want to take a stand up and maybe just take a little bit of a roll of your hips before we do the other side. Having taken it one way, take it the other and come then back to kneeling feet knees hip distance apart hands relaxing by your side taking your left foot forward bringing your hands either side of your left foot with your hips relaxing check your knee and ankle make sure your ankle is a little way in front of your knee so you've got a slope away from you on your shin With your hips relaxing, keep them low as you bring your left hand onto your knee, press into the hand to lift your torso, taking your other hand onto the knee. So let it, as your hips relax down, if you wanted a bit more stretch on that hip, you could take your torso further back. That increases the stretch, stretch in the hip flexor. As you next exhale, see if you can bend your left knee a little more, relaxing your hips down a little more. So you can keep your right knee down. If you wanted to strengthen this, you could tuck your right toes under and lift that knee. Wherever your knee is, as you next inhale, lift your arms, stretch your arms ceilingwards as you relax your hips matwards. If your right knee is lifted, keep your right heel pressing back. Fine, stay here, but if you want to strengthen this, look between your hands and then take your arms up and back, tilting your rib cage up to the ceiling, feeling the way that strengthens the stretch on your right hip flexor. Holding here for one more breath, lifting your arms and lifting your chest, relaxing your hips. And if you're looking up, look forward. If your right knee's lifted, lower it down, bringing your hands down either side of your left foot. Taking a breather there, Maybe walking your hands back and making your left leg a little straighter, lifting the toes of your left foot. Bringing yourself back forward, landing your left foot down. Bringing your left hand inside your left foot, palms flat on the ground. Turn your left foot out to 90 degrees. And then when you're ready, just walking your hands forward allowing your chest to come down the inside of that leg, bringing it, keeping it level with the mat, 
maybe starting to bend your elbows, allowing your left knee to go out to the left, feeling and enjoying that stretch in your left hip, maybe directing the coolness of your inhale right into that hip. Your elbows may come to the ground, but if, you, if they do come close to the ground, make sure both elbows come to the ground, not just one. Taking two more breaths, exhale, relaxing on the exhale. Starting to walk your hands back in as you come back up. Once your hands are back in, turning your left foot back to face forward, left hand comes the other side of your knee, bringing yourself back up and bringing your left leg back. Coming to stand up and just taking a little bit of a stretch and shake of the legs. And then coming back to sit down. Bringing, crossing your legs, if that's comfortable. We're gonna take a twist. If cross, sitting cross-legged isn't your most comfortable, you could um, take the twist just as well with your legs stretched out. Also, um, do sit on a block, if that will allow you to sit upright and be more comfortable. Taking your right hand behind you, fingertips pressing firmly into the ground so that you are lifting and straightening your torso. Taking your left hand onto your left knee or left leg if your legs are out straight. When you next exhale, turn your chest to the right. So taking your chest around, once it's gone as far as it will go, take your gaze over your right shoulder with your chin level. Seeing if you can move your right shoulder into the space that's behind it. Using both the strength in your upper body to twist as well as your left arm. Taking two breaths as you inhale, press into your back hand and re-straighten, lifting your chest, lifting your rib cage as you exhale, easing round a little more to the right. When you next exhale, Relax your whole body and bring yourself back around to the front. Hands one on each knee or onto your legs if your legs are straight. Pulling on your knees so you can lift your chest and straighten. Taking your left hand behind you, bringing your right hand onto your left knee. Stay facing forward for a moment. Press into your back hand and lift and straighten. When you next exhale, Start the turn, taking your chest around to the left, taking your gaze over your left shoulder, taking your left shoulder back into the space just behind it. And then for the next couple of breaths, as you exhale, as you inhale, pressing into your back hand, lifting and straightening, exhaling, easing round a millimeter or two more. When you next breathe out, release, relax, and bring yourself to the front. Stretching your legs out, giving them a shake, and coming to standing. For our standing postures, we're going to take two of the warriors. Warrior one to start and warrior three warrior three is a balance we're going to transition seamlessly from one to the other we will start with warrior one everybody's who's watching their mats facing me so if you come to face on an uh no, thank goodness you're going side to side aren't you if you're if your mats facing this way then let's all start facing this way so if you face that way and take your legs as wide as they will comfortably go, bringing your hands onto your hips. Turn your right foot in towards you 
and point your left foot away from you. Bringing your, using your hands to bring your hips around. As always with a warrior posture, we want real strength in the legs. So starting with the back leg, press the whole of your right foot firmly down into the mat. As you do that, you'll feel the leg strengthen. Then start to really focus on pressing the heel down so that your right knee will lift a little, making that leg as straight as you can. And as you press that leg down, you'll be able to bring your right hip forward a little more. So you're bringing your hips back to a line as much as you can with the short edge of your mat. Hands on hips, taking a lift of your chest. As you next exhale, slowly start bending your left knee. Keep your torso upright as you lower. Keep your back foot pressing down so the back leg keeps its strength. Once you've come down as far as you can, and make sure that your ankle is in front of your knee. So do push your foot forward a little if you need to. Then strengthen this leg by drawing the left knee back so you're bringing your left thigh bone more firmly into the socket. And again, as you do that, that will also bring your left hip back as your back foot draws your right hip forward. When you next inhale, lift your arms. Stretching your arms up towards the ceiling. And then we're going to take two breaths to really deepen this warrior pose. Before we do anything, make sure your back foot is still pressing firmly down. When you next inhale, lift your arms higher to the ceiling. And when you next exhale, see if you can sink lower. Next inhale, arms lift higher. Next exhale, hips sink lower. Hold there for one more breath. Then the seamless transition. Very slowly and carefully, lift your back heel away from the ground, pivoting around on your toes so that your foot faces forward. You might need to bring the foot in a little to allow you to do that. Then take some tiny steps at first to bring that foot in. Once it's come in enough, you could then start to let it lift behind you and float up towards the ceiling, stretching your hands forward. So you're really reaching forward, lifting your back leg as high as your balance allows. So your right heel is pressing back, your hands are stretching forward, your left leg is pressing down into the ground. Then to come out, after having one final stretch forward and back, Slowly bend your left knee, your standing knee, so that your back foot can land down. Once that foot's landed down, we're not over yet, lift your arms so you're coming back to warrior one, bending your left knee, a good warrior one. And then as you next inhale, straighten your front knee, turn into the side, feet face forward, hands on hips, and heel toe your feet back together. And then take a breath. Take a moment's breath there. Warrior ones were looking, oh, did I am completely out of breath. Warrior ones looking fantastic. And we've had some good, done some good in hip opening, which is really helpful for a warrior one. Getting ready then to take it to the other side. So face the other way, stretching your legs wide, hands on hips, turning your left foot in and pointing your right foot to the short edge of your mat. Use your hands on your hips. Bring your hips to face the short edge of your mat. Strengthen your back leg. Push the whole of your left leg into the ground. And as that leg pushes into the ground, your left hip will come forward. Letting your knee move back towards the wall behind you. Take a lift of your chest. On your next exhale, start slowly bending your right knee. Keep your torso upright as your hips lower. Keep the back foot pressing firmly in. When you've come as low as you can, make sure your ankle is in front of your knee. Then draw your right knee back, sucking your right thigh bone deep into, the, into its socket. 
that will take your right hips back a little more, pressing into your back foot, bring your left hip forward a little more. As you next inhale, lift your arms up towards the ceiling. Stretching high to the ceiling, feel that stretch in your armpits. Back leg still pressing down firmly. As you next inhale, lift your arms higher to the ceiling. As you exhale, sink lower. Inhaling, hands lift. Exhale, sink. Back foot pressing firmly down, arms lifting. Sinking lower if you've got any more. Then transitioning to warrior three. Slowly lift your back heel, pivoting around. Bring your foot in a little if you need to. Some tiny steps at first to bring that foot in. When it's in enough, let that foot lift up to the ceiling. Keep your leg as straight as you can. Lift as high as your balance allows. Stretch your arms forward as you stretch your left hand heel back away from you, looking directly down at the ground, stretching as long as you can. If you're nearly parallel with the ceiling, you could also see if you can bring your left hip lower a little so your hips stay in line. Take one more breath, stretching long to come out, start to bend your right knee, land your foot back behind you as far away as you can lifting your arms back up, bending your right knee to come back into warrior one, back foot pressing firmly down. And as you next inhale, straighten your right leg, come back to face the side, feet face forward, hands on hips, heel toe your feet back together. But once you're there, do whatever feels right. That might be a, that kind of thing, might be a bit of that. Yeah, that one seems to be the popular one. Whatever just allows you to release. And then we will finish with a forward fold. So today we've done Paschimottanasana three ways. For those who took the um, uh, pose of tranquility, we did it on our backs, reaching forward, hands on straight legs. We then did Paschimottanasana where we sit and fold forward and we're going to take the final one standing, lifting your arms up towards the ceiling, feet hip distance apart and pressing down into the ground. As you next exhale, start hinging from your hips, reaching your arms forward, noting how when you get to that halfway point, that's where we start Paschimottanasana when we're um, sitting on, on the ground. Then keep that going, seeing if you can come any lower with your arms still lifted. But when you can come no lower, let your arms relax down to the ground. Let your neck muscles relax. Let your chest relax down. Do take a bend in your knees if there's any discomfort in your lower back. Taking the opposite arm with the op elbow with the opposite hand, relaxing your neck muscles, allowing everything to relax down towards the ground, using your next two or three breaths. Every time you exhale, relax a little more to the mat. Then if you've got a hold of your arms, just let them relax down towards the ground, seeing where you come to. Take a bend of your knees, tuck your tailbone under and slowly release and unfurl back upwards. Once you're lifted up, take a roll of your shoulders. And with that, our work is done. Time for some final relaxation, bringing yourself to a comfortable lying down posture, placing a block or a cushion under your head if you have one's hand, and if that's comfortable, if that helps you to be more comfortable, letting your feet relax apart, turning your palms to face up, hands a bit away from the body. I like that, Barry. You could also take a cushion or cushion behind your knees. That looks wonderful. And taking 
a few conscious breaths here. Three or four long, slow, steady inhales and exhales. Every exhale, releasing any tension from the body. Every exhale, relaxing the body more closely towards the ground. And you can keep your attention on your breath, making this a more meditative practice, or you can release the practice and just simply relax and let go. Keeping your body still for another moment, bring your awareness gently back. Wriggle fingers and toes to bring movement back and reconnect with your body. Bringing your legs together, taking your arms overhead for a gentle stretch. So toes press forward, hands stretch backwards. bending your knees, bringing your arms over and then one knee followed by the other onto your chest, hugging your knees in, taking your rocks side to side. Bring that rocking to a halt in the middle, bring your head to your knees, draw your knees down towards your chest. Release your knees, land your feet down, land your head down, from there, maybe coming to the right hand side for a moment or two, slowly bringing yourself back to sitting. Wonderful to see you all. Namaste, thank you.